You cannot make light of systemic racism because that is where our problems begin with systemic racism. All problems begin with the system. Our problems begin with the hatred that the system is built upon towards us. That's the beginning of our problems. And you can't dismiss that. Because no matter what you do within this system, you're still black within this system. You cannot educate yourself above racism. You cannot vote yourself outside of racism. You cannot ingratiate yourself to white folks and, and kind of get outside of racism. You cannot culturally whiten yourself up and become an a, 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 a honorary white person and think that racism is still not going to affect you, man. Because it's, it don't work that way. This is a systemic thing. Everything I'm about to say, you already know it's true. You are a slave. You are a slave to money, to social economics, to status, to politics, to ideology. You have sold your soul to have a place in a world order that you should naturally oppose. Whoa now, whoa now, whoa now. Welcome back to the Black Elf and your boy, Brother Kush. I want to do a video, man, based on something um, Sister said, you know what I'm saying? She, she, she triggered a thought in my mind, you know, that I want to kind of expound on, you know. And um, it's, it's interesting, you know, that, that I don't really think most people fully understand what is meant by system. And now we're not taking shots at She's a supporter. She triggers thoughts. Triggering thoughts that cause me to have to explain something is not a bad thing. I want y'all to trigger thoughts in my mind because if you don't trigger the thought, I won't think about it. I just don't think certain ways. So if you don't make me think about it, a lot of times I won't think about it. So I appreciate her triggering certain thoughts in my mind to get me talking. You know what I'm saying? But I want to talk today about what do I mean by system? and systemic racism because i don't think we understand what systemic racism is and 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 how how impactful it is on the lives of black people but i'm gonna try my best to freestyle this one right now in this video so let me get into it before i get started like the video share the video subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon to receive notifications when i drop more videos if you don't hit the bell icon youtube will not notify you when i drop videos you will have to come back to the channel physically to see if I drop the video. Uh, if you want to donate to the channel, you have Cash App, Dollar Sign, The Black Alpha. You have Venmo, at The Black Alpha. And you have PayPal, RealBlackAlpha at gmail.com. Yes, my Patreon is coming. I keep saying it. I know y'all getting tired of me saying, this nigga always said it. I do real life be catching me, you know what I'm saying? I do have real life, you know what I'm saying? I have family stuff come up, you know what I'm saying? You know how I go. I ain't, it, it don't matter. But I'm working on it, and it's going to be ready. Actually, the videos are ready. I'm just not sure if I want to put the videos out that's ready. That's that. That's really another holdup. I have content there, but I'm just not sure if y'all can really feel that content. That's kind of like what inspired a video I posted before this one, just talking about um, the the role of the elder. That you come to the elder for different information, right? That's when that's when inspired that video, you know. It's just I'm not sure if y'all ready for the content. You know, I'm just not sure. But anyway, let's get into this here. I don't know if y'all seen this um thing I did, you know, with this graphic right here, right? It was that graphic. And I, I wrote some stuff talking about the whole thing with the Walmarts, you know, the looting of the Walmart and stuff. But I didn't really talk too much about that because it's because, see, the problem is not the looting of the Walmart. The problem is the fact that brothers are put in a situation where they feel they have to do something. And, and that's the problem because of the way the system is that we live under. This system doesn't just force the hands of black people. Crime is committed across the board. For some reason, though, we only focus on the crimes committed by black people. We make it unique. And only we do this. Us and the system. See, the system completely ignores all these Asian games. The system completely... Hold on, I'm going to put the frame back up while I rant. I'm going to come back to this. The system completely ignores all the Asian games, all the white biker games that be getting in shootouts and, and knife fights and, and, and all types of rest stops, be beating each other to death. 
shooting at each other, stabbing each other. The system ignores all of this. And they only focus on black people. So you think that we the only ones that commit crime, that we the only ones loot stores, that we the only ones do things. We're not. Crime is across the board. Every group in America has their criminal elements because every group in America have people within their group that will try something when their back is against the wall. And this system pushes everyone's back against the wall. That's what, it's, that's what it is designed to do. It is designed to break, bend you and bend you. It don't want to break you necessarily, but it wants to bend you in half if it can. And for some dudes, they just don't want to bend no more, so they try to straighten out and try something. And those become your criminal elements. Only two ways you can go when you break, when, when you stand up and say, no more, I'm not going to be bent anymore. There's only two routes you can take. You try some type of legitimate self-employed hustle, or you become a criminal. That's it. That is it. Now, that brings me to what sister said let me go over here to this let me, let, me, let me put this back up because what she said in response to to my comment right she said i understand and agree with your sentiment wholeheartedly while also understanding that regardless of the systemic racism some of the pookies can choose to do something else let's stop right there let's stop right there because the whole point is they are choosing to do something else. They're hitting the streets. That is the something else that they're choosing to do. Because them dudes have fewer options. I don't know how many of y'all are actually from ghettos, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm the only ghetto rat on YouTube anymore. You know what I'm saying? But these dudes don't have a lot of options. They don't have a lot of skills. And if they did, they're not bankable. You know, in her, in the response to that comment, I mentioned about myself going to engineering school in the military, right? I went to an engineering program in the military. But because of the way we are brainwashed, you understand? I was young. And when I got court martial and kicked out the military, I never even thought about using them engineering skills. Because I never looked at it as a trade. Because I didn't go to a trade school and I didn't go to a college. And this is all we talk about, college. We talk about college this, college that. I mean, so I never even looked at my engineering schooling as being the equivalent of a master degree or PhD, which it is, until 10, 12 years later. It took me to mature to realize that, man, I was given a PhD level education. But because the way we frame stuff around college, school i didn't go to a school so i never looked at it as school when the truth is military school is superior to college superior because our lives depend on you actually knowing how to perform that duty you have to actually understand your your your, your skill through and through and the military will drill that into you in a matter of six months Y'all go to school eight years to get what I learned in six months. You got to go to college that long. Because the military don't play. You going to learn this stuff, right? So anyway, but I never looked at it as though it was actually school. That was the problem. So you could say that I was given an opportunity to take a different route, but not really because of the way the system frames things. It had me in the box. Remember, I was young. I was young and wild already, right? So, I mean, I, I was already in the streets before I went to the military. When I got kicked out, I just simply went back to the streets. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, it's what I knew. I simply went back to what I knew. But I did have a chance to do something different at that moment, right? But who knows? Okay, let's look at that. Let's, let's look at another way. I got the skill, but now can I actually put military school on a resume being that I got court motion and kicked out the military? They was going to hold that against me anyway. Now, I know that I could be a cop out. I could be saying this and you could say, well, you don't know if you didn't try. I don't know. 
but we do know of situations where dudes have come out with skills that they can't bank on because of the way they left the military. If you're not, if you don't leave with an honorable discharge, a lot of times you can't use the skill that you got in there. It's just how the system is. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the system. So when the sisters say that the pookie could have did something else, they did do something else. They stealing clothes. They running up off, uh, up in stores. Flash mob, flash mob snatching grab um, sessions, right? Snatching a whole bunch of stuff, running out so they can go back to wherever and sell the stuff. You know, they stealing all kinds of shit. Man, do you know now at the Walmart where I'm at, the socks and shit is under lock and key. You can't, you can't even go in and just grab socks no more. You know what I mean? Condoms under lock. I mean, they, they stealing the things that they can actually sell in the streets. That is there something. Some dudes sell drugs. Some dudes get off into Ponzi schemes. They get off into all these multi-level marketing schemes. These are all doing something. But the truth of the matter is, the problem is that you have to try to do something. Suppose you don't want to do nothing in life. Suppose you just want to live your life like the rest of the creatures on our planet do. Off the land. We don't have that option anymore as human beings. And the option is getting less and less uh, uh, available as time go on. We are going deeper and deeper into this system every passing generation. Deeper and deeper. To the point where you, you won't be able to turn around and walk out of it. What I'm trying to tell y'all right now is that we need to get out of this system right we need to get out let me read the last piece of this here she said some of them have been afforded the opportunity to finish school school is not an answer learn a trade etc trades are the answer now she's right about that she's 100 percent right about it. a trade is a good thing to have within the system a very good thing right but you know you better be be prepared as a black man to use your trade in, in a self-employed manner and good luck on that too, man. Look, it's just hard on us. The economics of being black is hard. It's just hard. It's just not the same. You know, I try to explain to people a lot of times that there's a that there is a white American experience, or shall I say there's an American experience, and then there's a black American experience. It's not the same. The America that everybody else see and enjoy and all this stuff is not the America that we see. First of all, we are the only people that have just as much opposition coming from within as we do coming from without, from the outside, shall I say, coming from the outside. That's the problem. We're the only people that have to suffer this. We have just as many enemies and opposing factions within our so-called community as we do outside of the community. So not only do we have the system outside, we have all the cheerleaders of the system outside. We also have cheerleaders of the system on the inside. Nobody else experienced that. Nobody else experienced that. You know, as bad as, you know, look, I did time. Damn penitentiary is full of Mexicans too. Full of white boys. In fact, one of the prisons I was at, in fact, all the prisons I was at were, were slightly majority white male, right? I mean, I was in men's prison, naturally. Slightly majority white men, all of them. Oh, man, all, got all the blacks in prison, the prison population, the blacks. And I tell people, I've been telling people since I came home, that is not true. Stop repeating that. We are not the majority in prisons. We are not the majority. And then, see, when you start talking like that, then they start trying to get into the, to, to, to the breakdown, the proportions related to population and all that stuff. But that's, that, that's a myth. Because first of all, our population is never accurately depicted. It's never accurately stated. That 13% shit, that's, we, we way more than 13% here in America, bro. Way more. Do y'all go outside? Do y'all move around? Do y'all travel? I get tired of saying this. You go get in the car. Take you, take you about two, three weeks, right? And you drive, literally, from the, the Canadian border on the West Coast, California, come across to Vegas, and come across to Texas, then come through the South, hit Louisiana, New Orleans, all this stuff, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, Virginia, New York area, <clears throat> St. Louis, Philly. Once you start getting these regions, the Chi-Town area, 
you know what I'm saying, Gary, Indiana, you know what I'm saying? Once you start traveling like that, you'll realize you don't see nothing but blacks. <laughs> you don't see nothing but blacks. We are everywhere. So the population has never been properly stated to begin with. So when they start talking about, well, we are disproportionate more people in prison than white, it's a lie. And then you got to still factor in the system. How are we policed? How are we targeted? How are our crimes judged within the system as opposed to their crimes? How many blacks and whites were on a case together? All the blacks go through 30 years and the whites on the case either go home scot-free or get probation. This happens all the time. I'm not talking about no one of. I'm talking all the time. This happens all the time. All the time. So you, you cannot dismiss the system. And that's what my point was in my response to the sister, you know, when she said, regardless of systemic racism, eh, 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 eh. you cannot make light of systemic racism because that is where our problems begin with systemic racism. All problems begin with the system. Our problems begin with the hatred that the system is built upon towards us. That's the beginning of our problems. And you can't dismiss that. Because no matter what you do within this system, you're still black within this system. You cannot educate yourself above racism. You cannot vote yourself outside of racism. You cannot ingratiate yourself to white folks and, and kind of get outside of racism. You cannot culturally whiten yourself up and become a, 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 a honorary white person and think that racism is still not going to affect you, man. Because it's, it don't work that way. This is a systemic thing. So you might be saying, well, Brother Kush, explain to us what do you mean by systemic? Okay, y'all remember that racist judge got in trouble down in Louisiana or Baton Rouge, one of them, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Imagine how many cases that judge presided over or presides over or presided over. Imagine you standing in front of a judge for some bullshit and this man can't stand black people. That's systemic racism. Systemic racism is more than just the way the politicians word stuff. It's the fact that every level of this system, we got to deal with the gatekeepers that hold certain pre-established beliefs about us or predetermined ideologies about us. We got to deal with this on every level. Whether we trying to get a job. And this is what I'm saying. As a man like me, most of you so-called dudes that call y'all so pro, self pro-blacks, Y'all can save it, bro, because I know that if I walked in there in a, in, and you was over the, um, the human resource department, you was hiring, you was doing the hiring for a corporation or job, right? And I walk my ass in there, no matter how I'm dressed, because you can still hear it in, in the way I talk, my vernacular, my intonations, you can hear it. So no matter how I present myself physically, dress-wise, you're going to know what kind of black man I am. And you're not going to hire me. Black people won't hire us. So when you say, sister, that they could do something else, what can they do when nobody would give these young brothers a chance? We throw them under the bus every chance we get. We act like they should all be lined up and shot. When they are not the problem, they are only responding to a problem. Oh, y'all ain't hear me. Y'all ain't hear me. They are responding to the problem. They're not the problem. They're not the causes of anything. They are the effects of something. They were born in situations and conditions that they have no control over. And it's easy to just sit there and say that they can do something else when there's really nothing else that they know they can do. Who's going to give them a chance to do something else? Who's going to give them the opportunity to change? Who's going to even talk to them and invest in these brothers? Because them dudes just trying to survive. First of all, nobody wants to work all day. And this is the first thing we got to stop, stop lying to ourselves about. We want to call people who don't want to work lazy. God damn it, nobody wants to work all day. Do you not see how frustrated people are all day in that traffic, that city traffic, trying to commute back and forth to work, blowing their horns at the slightest infractions? I mean, if you're not sitting at the stoplight like you in the Indy 500 waiting to pop the clutch and go as soon as the light turns green, 
I mean, the light turned green and you count to one second, somebody blowing their horn. Ah, 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 flipping the bird at you, bitch. Draw your cut. You know what I'm saying? I mean, people are mad. People are angry because of this system. Nobody wants to participate in this system like this. Y'all buy into the system in the name of being better than others. See, you know you got to do it. First of all, you know you have to do it. And then you pretend like you want to do it because now you want to pretend like it makes you better than the people, like the, the low class people. Now, all this rant is not about. Let me stop there. I know I'm kind of ranting on and on, but this is not directed at her. Her words trigger the thoughts, but this is not directed at her. I don't want you lame ass dudes think I'm attacking a woman. Start, start, start subscribing to my channel thinking I'm red pill. You know, oh, he roasting that chick. No, I'm not roasting that chick. You know what I'm saying? That is my sister. I am not roasting her. She said something that made me think about this response. That's all. That's all. Her thoughts are pervasive. They out there. You know what I'm saying? They, they, are, they are common. More common. So I get to address a common thought because she triggered it. And we got to give her applause. We're not roasting the sister. We are talking about what she said in a general sense. But let me get back to that. There's nothing else they can do because nobody's going to invest in them and help them. Nobody's going to take the time out to talk to them. Nobody's going to try to reach them because they don't really want to be a part of the system. They don't want to work like we work. So you got a non-starter right there. They just don't want to do it. They don't want to get up early in the morning, have to get dressed and put on clothes, you know, and drive an hour, you know what I'm saying, to a job, sit on that job all damn day but somebody threatening to fire them all damn day, either in words or in tone in passive aggressive tone they don't want to go through that they got to drive back home they don't have enough time for themselves to even do nothing to enjoy life that life becomes just work this is why the self-deletion rates are so high right now because the young generation are tired of seeing life is that this is it in fact my wife told me that the, um the place where she works she manages right where she works she told me that so many of the young people that come through they don't last long, but some of them come through and they be so depressed. Like, is this it? And they talk to like, you know, is this it? Is this how life is? I mean, is, is, is this all we got to look forward to coming to work all day, every day, long hours? I mean, is this it until we damn the day? Is this it? Yes, this is it. And that's the problem. Anyone with common sense don't want to live the way we live. And Pookie and Ray Ray just have the God-given inclinations, right? They're tapped into their natural instincts so much so that they know that this is not a way that they want to live. So they are willing to try something else because that's what made me go on the streets. This is not a way I want to live. Working all damn day. Good, luckily for me, I never had to work like that, you know what I'm saying? My wife doesn't really work like that because we, we do make money other ways, you know what I'm saying? But she does have a job, you know what I'm saying? And I do have a job also, but my my work is inside, her work is outside, right? You know what I'm saying? Out the house. But the point is, you know, if I had to get up and commute all damn day, I don't know if I can do it. If I had to work like most of y'all work, I just, I can't really, I honestly, I don't think I can do it. At my age, I've never done it. I damn sure can't think that I would start doing it now. I've never had to do it. I've owned my own businesses so long. Oh, but you work when you're self-employed. Now, that's a topic for another day. But Pookie and Ray Ray would do that. If you give them their own business, they'll work all day on their own business. They'll put long hours in on their own. But they're not going to put long hours in to go get verbally abused at no job. They're not going to do it and get paid pennies. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. So when I talk about the system, as I was explaining about the judge, as I was explaining about the gatekeepers to jobs, the gatekeepers to opportunity, the way the banking system is, it's all against us. The educational system, they lie about everything concerning black people. Everything. I get tired of telling y'all we are indigenous Americans and West Indians. We are in our actual indigenous homeland. They lie about everything concerning us. And again, the main problem that I see with us is that we got to fight ourselves. 
So the first thing we need to do really is clean our own house. That's why I want to create a separate uh, black community. Because the first thing we got to do is clean up our own house. We can't fight with each other like this. Because our biggest option, take for instance, I just said we're indigenous Americans. Do you know who our greatest opposition to that is? Black folks. White folks don't argue that. I tell white people all the time about my Chickasaw and Choctaw and, and, um, ancestry. Them people don't question it. They, they don't even care. They're like, oh, okay. Because cause deep down, they all know they ain't from here. <laughs> and, and deep down, nobody really believes the slave story to that degree. Do they believe that they may have brought some people over here under certain type of circumstances or whatnot? Yeah, I think everybody kind of believe that happened, right? Including niggas like me, right? Who know better, who knows that we not from Africa. I could, I could see them bringing in indentured servants from other places, right? And some of them being black. I could see that. But do anybody actually believe they stacked people up six, seven, eight high on a damn ship that came across a damn ocean? No! Nobody believes that story. Nobody believes that story. Not in your heart of hearts. You want to believe it because this is what the educational system beat into us. So we want to believe it based on that. But outside of that, it doesn't jive with God-given common sense. So you have a problem. Your natural instincts tell you, your God-given common sense tell you that no, that don't sound right. That's impossible. It's impossible for this stuff to happen like that. And looking at how physically strong we are, how aggressive we are, how in the hell are they going to be able to do that? Do you realize that it would take six, seven overseers to contain one black man? Anything less than five white boys, we're going to beat the hell out of them by ourselves. I've been in fights with multiple white boys and came out standing. In fact, in prison, I jumped on three white boys. And walked away with all them laying on the ground. By myself. Told my boys, I got this. The dudes I was with, they was like, Kush, you need me back? Nah, I, I got this, man. I got this, bro. This lightweight. You know what I'm saying? This lightweight. You gonna, you gonna fight all three of them? I think I'm a night ward, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I fight three black dudes. I get beat up. <laughs> but I'm gonna fight. I fight three black dudes. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna get beat up by them. I'm gonna fight all three of them and knock them out. And that's what I did. I fought all three of them and knocked them out. But the point is, there is no way they can do that to us, man. Not the way they just, it wouldn't work. It couldn't happen. We are just too strong. We are too aggressive. They couldn't do that to us. So instinctively, most white people don't really believe it. So if you tell them that, nah, man, that, that stuff is exaggerated, man. My people's already here, man. We such and such Indians. They don't even question it. But let me tell a pro-black nigga that. Let me tell an educated nigga that. Let me tell one of y'all college grads that. Now it's a problem. You can't see it. You can't phantom it. it. You just can't grasp it. Because you've been conditioned by this system to think one way and one way only about yourself. And any black man or black woman tells you differently, you reject it. And this is the problem. So when you're talking about the system, you cannot be dismissive about it. Because the effects of this system on us is real. Actually, the effect of this system on all of us, every race of people, all of us is real. But, but especially the effects of this system on black Americans. Because you got to remember, this is our homeland. If we ever wake up and claim our homeland, we walk, we break our chains from this system automatically. So it got to constantly work to keep us within these mental chains. And there, and you know who helps them keep us in slaves? You know, you know who their greatest allies is to keep us in slaves? Educated Negroes in your pro-black sector. Your professional managerial class and your pro-black Negroes. That's our main problem. Hey, bro, I just cooked on that. Sister, thank you so much uh, for that comment. You know what I'm saying? You always make me think, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to start doing more responses to um, comments because I get some good comments. You know, some, not everybody agree, but, you know, again, I'm my path has been different from a lot of y'all. I don't really expect most of y'all to understand 
what I say or why I say it. But just know this here. I don't pull nothing out of my ass. It's, it's not my style. I don't pull nothing out of my ass. But don't stop questioning me. I don't want you to ever get to a point where you say, well, I know Chris mean, I know he said it for a reason. No, if you got a opposing thought, say it. Type it in there. Shoot in the email. Hit me up on Telegram. You know what I'm saying? Let me know your opposing thought. Don't ever think that I don't want to hear it because if you thinking it, other people are thinking it. So if you say it, you cause me to have to respond to it, then it benefit other people because that's our jobs here. We're here to make real changes. But the first change we got to make is within because our greatest enemies are on the inside. They're not on the outside. They are on the inside. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon. Remember that, hit that bell icon or you have to come back and check on the, check the channel out. If you want to support the channel, you know what I'm saying? I told you, Cash App, Dollar Sign, The Black Alpha, Venmo, at The Black Alpha, PayPal, at Real Black Alpha, at Gmail. If you have any suggestions on content or you just want to chop it up with your boy behind the scene, you can email me at Real Black Alpha at Gmail or you can hit me up on Telegram. Telegram is completely anonymous. You don't get my information. I don't get your information. You know what I'm saying? You can contact me on Telegram. Then you can text me. You can even call through Telegram. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to talk about something, you know what I'm saying? You want you want to ask some advice off site. You know what I'm saying? Um, on on an opinion. Now I don't want to say advice, right? You want an opinion or a different perspective on something, man? Look, I'm accessible. You know what I'm saying? I'm very accessible. I'm not a funny acting dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm very sincere about what I do. I'm, I'm sincere about why I'm here. So, you know, on that note, I'm out of here, man. Till next time, bro. I'm Brother Kush, a.k.a. The Black Alpha. Salam.